Let's talk about tasers. Have you ever, uh, have you ever used your taser? Did you, did you have tasers? Not, not in my day. Tasers came out when I started going to the UN and I haven't actually used one. Mm. I think taser is a great tool. Tasers don't always work. Um, I know officers that used, uh, before we had pepper spray, we had CN gas. Uh, and I know an officer who maced somebody and then stood back and waited for this guy to, I guess, fall down on the ground and handcuff himself. Sometimes they don't always work. There's cases where tasers don't work on people that are severely hopped up on drugs. Yeah, I've seen videos of, of people getting tased three and four times and it's seeming to not phase them. Right. Uh, that could, it, it could be that the taser wasn't fully charged. There could be other issues. It could be drugs, but nothing works 100% of the time. Mm. I think tasers are an excellent tool, but even a taser can be overused. Uh, you see a police officer who, the tasers fall in the use of force continuum where a baton falls. So if I'm justified in hitting you with a baton, I'm justified in tasing you. But you see cases where a, a kid in school won't comply with what the officer says, so the officer tases the kid. Or even a suspect on the street, tell them sit down on the curb. They don't sit down on the curb, you tase them. If you envision applying the taser like hitting them with a baton, if I tell you sit down and you don't sit down, am I justified in hitting you with the baton? I would say no. So because it doesn't cause permanent injury in most cases, it, it could be over overused. I've also heard some people say that the taser should not be so um, so kind of blithely called non-lethal because it actually there's a small but you know not not infinitesimally small chance that it kills you either if you have a pre-existing condition or if you just consider the fact that it makes your whole body stiff and then you go you can go down on the pavement or on a curb head first and crack your head open or break your neck and die instantly you you actually hit on one of my pet peeves uh, i'm on, i'm an instructor in specialty impact munitions which is uh, bean bags and rubber bullets and that sort of thing and it grates my nerves when people call those less than lethal Beanbags, tasers, none of those are less than lethal. They're less lethal. You can still kill somebody with a rubber bullet. It happened in Kosovo when I was there. Uh, two people in a riot got shot in the temple with a rubber bullet and it killed them. Yeah, a taser could create circumstances if it doesn't directly, like you said, if the person starts to move and they can strike their head and get a skull fracture or something, nothing is completely non-lethal. They are less lethal. Mm. So did you see the the case of Rayshard Brooks in, in Atlanta, I believe, from a few months ago, where they were trying to make a, an arrest at a drive through The drive through called them for, for some reason. And, and this guy is beating on the cop, grabs the taser, and then runs away from the cop. But as he's running away, turns around and shoots the taser at the cop. So uh, he, he's both running away and attacking the cop at the same time, and then the cop open fires. What was your impression of that video, if you, if you remember it? Yeah, that one, and there was one in South Carolina where the officer shot, the, shot at the guy like eight times and the guy was running away. Mm -hmm. And the officer's story was he grabbed my taser. And this is a, a great question because this is some of the hairs that have to be sliced here. Okay. If I am confronting you one on one and you get my taser, you have the ability to incapacitate me, take my weapon and kill me. Right. Taser is a one shot weapon. If there's two officers and you get my taser, can you take out both of us with the taser? No. So with one officer, I may be justified in shooting because you can incapacitate me with that taser. When it's multiple officers, he can't take out everybody with a taser. So if he's running away, once he fires that taser, he's for all practical purposes unarmed because the taser has already fired its, its cartridge. Yeah. It's, um, 
Yeah, it's it's really tough because I I often find myself in the position of defending police officers in these scenarios because not not because they don't make deadly mistakes, but because it seems like sometimes you're in a position where you're going to work every day like all of us expecting to come home in one piece but the nature of your work is such that there could be a scenario where either you do it a hundred percent correctly or you're a murderer or you're you know you're considered a murderer by the general public and there's no gray area where you violated a department policy um you know did something you shouldn't have and get get punished in a way that is but, but that doesn't you know rise to murder or even criminal punishment and it seems people have a very difficult time admitting that a cop could be a bad cop he could be a racist cop even um but not a murderer that should rot in prison for murder that that's i think the where a lot of these things fall i i think the problem we have with the current dialogue on this subject is that you basically have two poles. Everything the cops do is right. Every when the cops shoot, the cop needs to go to prison. Neither one of those are true. Um, I can tell you from my own career, when I teach deadly force to cops, one of the things I tell them is what makes the job challenging is that you have the power to decide whether or not to take a human life and your margin of error is zero. Mm. You can't be wrong. Take, take the incident I, I told you about. I had literally one fourth of a second to split a thousand hairs and make a decision that can be picked apart by experts and judges and lawyers for the next six months. That's incredibly challenging, but I, this is what I accepted and this is what I signed up for. And that has to be understood as well. 